Uh, hello everyone, my name is Sarang and in this video we're going to look into the AWS uh, step function synchronous and asynchronous workflows. Okay, so step function have uh, two kind of workflows which is standard and express workflow. So inside the express workflow you have two types asynchronous and the synchronous. Okay, so in this video we're going to look into uh, the synchronous express workflow and we'll also look how to configure that onto the AWS and how to trigger the, uh, the synchronous workflow using the API gateway as well. Okay, so the synchronous express workflow are the workflow where uh, uh, which, which kind of give you the uh, response uh, immediately and you can wait for it to be completed. So basically, if you have a workflow which takes a shorter duration of time to complete, then you can take a synchronous um, workflow uh, for your for your use case. So the synchronous workflow can run only for five minutes. But if you have a use case which kind of runs for more than five minutes, then you have to use the asynchronous express workflow. Okay. So the use case of uh, the asynchronous workflow could be like if you have a, a uh, if you want to uh, trigger the third party system from your workflow which takes a lot of time to respond then definitely have to go with the asynchronous workflow and also if you have a stage or the task inside the workflow which requires the human approval and it can basically uh, take a longer duration of time for the approval to happen then you can also use the asynchronous workflow in that case but if you have uh, the workflow which is short and which uh, which is kind of uh, orchestrating your microservices and you're sure that you're gonna uh, get the response out of this workflow within five minutes then use the synchronous express workflow for that use case so it's it's kind of from the client perspective you're starting a workflow and you're waiting for it to be completed and you will use the response of that uh, workflow uh, somewhere else right so uh, so basically asynchronous workflows are like you just trigger and you just forget about it and whenever you want the uh, workflow output you must uh, like pull the service call uh, cloudwatch logs okay so uh, so when we say that uh, that that it's a synchronous and asynchronous workflow is uh, so basically the way you trigger the workflow uh, tells what kind of workflow you're trying to uh, trying to uh, basically start so let's say you have created the step functions you have written the task inside the step function everything you have done but if you're going to use this step a step function start execution api to trigger the workflow then that workflow will be treated as a asynchronous workflow and if you're using a start sync execution api of the step function to trigger the workflow then that workflow will be considered as a synchronous express workflow Okay, so it kind of depends on what API you're using to trigger the workflow. Uh, that will kind of uh, tells the step function uh, whether whether it's a synchronous or the asynchronous workflow. Correct. So uh, to trigger the asynchronous, as I said, you need to kind of trigger the start execution API. So the way that you can trigger the start execution API is you need to give the input a name of the execution and the state machine ARN and, and the trace header. Right. So this is the re request syntax and the start sync execution which is used to uh, trigger the workflow of the synchronous uh, step function has a same request syntax it has input name step machine ar and the trace header but the the difference is the response now if you just look at the response of the start execution and the response you will get two field which says that execution arn and the start date because it's a asynchronous workflow now if you get these two keys in the response that means your workflow has been triggered but you'll not get the response immediately out of this workflow okay but if you are triggering the workflow using the start sync execution then the response of this api would be uh, having so many information about uh, the workflow the input and output and everything so you have the output of the workflow in the response correct so imagine that you're triggering the workflow using the start sync execution uh, you just uh, wait for like say 10 seconds for it to be completed after the 10 seconds the workflow once completed it will give you the response immediately and you will get that response inside this key called output it will be of type string okay so now let's go ahead and uh, start uh, building the uh, synchronous express workflow so i'm gonna uh, take a very simple uh, video recommendation uh, system use case so basically it's not going to be very complex it's going to be very simple so i'm going to create two lambda functions uh, that and i will orchestrate that lambda functions using the uh, synchronous uh, step function workflow and then uh, we're gonna uh, basically call that step function using uh, api gateway and then uh, we're gonna look how how it's gonna look like okay so 
I have this uh, step function uh, which is currently have no state machines in it. So let's go and create a step function. I'm going to create a blank one for now and I'm going to uh, use two lambda inside this step function. As I don't have uh, the lambda currently, so I'm going to go ahead and create a lambda functions first. So I will create one lambda function with the name user service. So let's go and create a function so the user service is the one which will try to kind of fetch the information of the user based on the user id from the database so we're not going to create any database in this uh, uh, in this use cases right so uh, i'll just uh, try to simulate that okay so i will get the payload okay and i'm gonna write inside this payload variable and then I'm going to get one user ID, payload dot user ID, and I'm just going to console log the uh, user ID. Okay. And then I'm going to just uh, return one dummy user. Okay. So as I said, I'm just going to uh, simulate the, uh, the, the fetching of, uh, let's say, fetching of the uh, user information from the database. Right, so it's like uh, uh, we we are just uh, creating a dummy user, right? So it will have a user ID, uh, it will have a name called uh, Sarang, and we're gonna create a video recommendation system, right? So uh, based on the user preference, we're gonna uh, basically recommend few videos. So uh, I will just write few preferences like AWS, uh, GoLang, and uh, one is a gRPC. Okay, so. Uh, I'll, I'll just write it like this and so what would happen is the step function will trigger this lambda first and the lambda will uh, take the uh, user id from the payload and then try to log the user id and then just return this uh, constant user to back to the uh, step function correct so now uh, this is the first lambda inside the uh, step function so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna write fetch user uh, Okay, so not this function. I have to write it this fetch user, and this is gonna be a recommend videos. Okay, so yet I have not created the uh, lambda for this, but I have created for this. So the for the fetch users. Now I'm gonna write user service. I mean, I'm just telling the step function to trigger this user service lambda, and here I don't have anything to do. So input. I don't want to use the input path and i will kind of omit the output path as well okay so now let's go ahead and uh, configure the uh, the other lambda which will kind of recommend the video based on the user preference right so the so the output of this fetch user lambda will become the input of this recommend videos lambda okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go again to the lambda and create recommend video service and i'll just keep the node.js as a runtime and let's wait for it to be completed okay so i have this uh, editor so here i can write payload dot event dot payload and from here i can try to uh, basically get the preferences of the users event dot preferences okay and then just create a function to kind of get or recommend videos okay and this uh, will kind of take a preference as one of the uh, input okay so i'm just writing uh, like simulating the uh, video recommendation okay system so based on the preference we'll recommend the video but for now i'm just gonna hard code it so i have few uh, video links here of my channel so i'm gonna return I'm, I'm just written i'm gonna return that so recommend videos preferences okay so this one i have added here so i will just to give this to videos and then i'm gonna return uh, all the information here so it's gonna be payload over here correct so i will destructure the payload and uh, then i'm also gonna add 
videos as one of the field inside the uh, response okay i'm going to deploy that as well so let's quickly check so we'll get an event where there will be a payload um, field which will hold the uh, input of the lambda and the payload ha would have the preferences uh, as one of the field and that would be a, a array type i'm i'm just passing that preference into this function and i'm returning a constant uh, array which would have uh, the title of the video and the video link okay and uh, this will be written uh, out of this uh, lambda function okay so here i'm going to kind of write it over here recommend video services and again i'll go back and check whether all everything is correct and i'm going to uncheck this output path and i think everything looks fine but let's go and change the name of this uh, function i mean the step function it's going to be sync express work flow demo here it's very important to select the express over here and i'm gonna go and click click the uh, create button and click confirm so as you can see uh, it has uh, it has started creating the um, the step function okay so let's wait for it to be completed so it has been completed so let's look at the definition so this definition of the step function has a uh, retry all, all the retry logics and everything but i don't require all this information so what i'm gonna do uh, go back to that step function edit and now look at the code part and i'm gonna remove this retry as i don't need this and also remove it from here okay and and here i can just uh, remove the function name because uh, as a part of the parameter the function name would also be uh, sent as an input to the lambda function so i don't require that so i'm going to take the value of the function name and add it to the resource okay and i'm going to remove this and keep the payload as it is i'm going to do the same thing for the first lambda and going to take the value of this and put it into the resources and remove the function name now uh, now everything looks fine i'll go ahead and save this okay and let's now go and test the execution of this start execution i just need to send a user id if you remember the first lambda requires a user id right and i'm going to start the execution so the execution type is expressed over here but still we have not informed the uh, step function whether it's a synchronous or asynchronous execution so it will treat as uh, okay so i think there is an error so video is not defined so let me just check that reference error video is not defined so let me go inside the step lambda and okay so it says that the video is not defined so i guess uh the error here it's it's maybe because of this comma so let's deploy this okay and let's start the execution fresh so i'll i'll come here and again trigger the uh, step function so i will write user id and just give one a dummy user id in the input so let's start the execution and wait for it to be completed so as you can see it is execution type express and here it got say it, it got succeeded uh, the status and you can see that the first lambda uh, got input where uh, the the user id that we supplied is is there in the input of this fetch user and the output from this um, uh, from this fetch user lambda is the user id name preference and uh, uh, the preferences has aws golang grpc the one if you remember that we hard coded inside the lambda and then uh, if you look at the recommend videos lambda it has an input which is which is kind of an output of the fetch user so that become the input for this recommend videos and it has been added under the payload and the output from this recommend videos is nothing but user id name preferences and along with the uh, uh, with, with with this input it has added the videos as well where the title is how to assume im role and discovering uh, science and learn go in one uh, video so this these are the uh, basically output from this recommend uh, videos lambda so as you can see it has orchestrated this two task and given us the uh, output 
in 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 this way but uh, basically what we can do now we can just uh, execute this uh, workflow uh, the workflow with the name that we have just created called sync express workflow demo we can trigger it from the api gateway and get the response back uh, so let's go ahead and create uh, one of the endpoint for this uh, workflow so here first we're gonna create a resource first so let's go and create uh, the resource so i'm gonna give a sync uh express yeah so sync sorry sync express uh workflow trigger okay so here under this i'm gonna create a method called post and here i'm gonna select aws service i'm gonna select a ap south one region where i have the workflow deployed and here i'm gonna use the step function as the aws service and this uh to trigger the step function i'm going to make use of the post api and the name of that api is nothing but the start sync execution okay and i'm going to paste it over here so here i'm going to write the execution role of uh, the api gateway so you need to supply a role which can trigger uh, which uh, the api gateway can use to trigger the step function so i have created one which has access to uh, the step function right so i'm going to copy the arn of it i'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to create the method. So as you can see, one resource got created with the name sync express workflow trigger. It has a post method. And if you remember that in the request, we need to supply input name ex state machine ERN and the trace header. So whenever we are trying to trigger the uh, the synchronous workflow, we have to supply this information. So the input is nothing but uh, the, the the user ID in our use case. So that input uh, will be added under the uh, input uh, under the input key and uh, the name of the execution which is optional i guess so if you come over here the name is not required but the state machine er is something which is uh, required so here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna leverage uh, the api gateway mapping template to constant to to, to add the constant value for the state machine er because i i don't want uh, the caller to always pass the state machine er so we're gonna make a constant inside the uh, mapping template okay so like whenever the user is calling the uh, this endpoint called sync express workflow trigger uh, the state machine here and uh, will be constant all the time so let's go and create a template i'm gonna write application slash json over here and create one input and here i'm gonna write double quote state machine arn so i need to supply the arn of the uh, step machine uh, of the step function over here okay and then here i have to kind of create one field with the name input okay which will uh, take the uh, request from the uh, user and give it to the step function so the util dot escape uh, java script make sure it is it is not interpreting it so there is a high chance that you make a typo so i am gonna convert the input which is coming from the let's say postman or from other service or like whenever you're trying to trigger the resource uh, whatever the input that you send will be uh, converted into a string so this is why i have added util dot escape javascript and here i need to grab the input so i'm gonna write input dot json and here i'm gonna take the entire input okay and make sure to add comma here and that's it so you go and created the template so now your template looks fine now just go and start uh, testing it before you deploy so i'm gonna write user id i'm gonna write one two three and if you go to the state machine let's see how many execution we have done we have done three executions i mean four execution in total so the fifth one we're gonna make it now so we got the response here it's a it's a huge response well let's let's call it from the uh, postman to just verify everything works fine so i'm gonna create one stage deploy to the stage called dev okay now i'm gonna take the url and gonna make use of that into uh, the postman so here is the postman uh, and i'm gonna convert that into a post call and here in the body i'm gonna pass the json right and it should be a user id i'm gonna pass any random user id okay we got the response right so the output is present under, under the output of the workflow is present under the output key where it has user id name preferences and the videos uh, the same one that we have uh, that we saw on the step function uh, console but other than that it has added so many other information which is not required at all so what we can do we can leverage the integration 
uh, response feature of API Gateway, right? Again, we're gonna create a mapping template for uh, the response so that it can uh, filter uh, only uh, the part that we required. Okay, so we're gonna create edit. Uh, sorry, click on the edit, and here I'm gonna write response, and the response is nothing but uh, taking in the entire JSON. So I'm gonna try it path and giving only the thing that we required so it's we only need the output the value of the output right so i'm gonna keep that under single quotes so input dot path uh, filter the output okay i uh, basically just take the uh, output key from that entire json response which is given by the step function and also make sure to escape that okay so i'm gonna write escape java script so that it's a uh, it's 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 the right json string that we get okay so to make the uh, json string we are using util dot escape javascript and inside that we are uh, we are we are just telling that we don't need the entire uh, json response we only need the output so that's what uh, this input dot path is doing okay so let's save this and also before deploying it it's good to test whatever the changes that we have done so i'm gonna write user id okay so let's click on test so that's what so now you, you can see in the response body we just have uh, the output that we require okay so the mapping template uh, of the integration response has worked as expected so let's deploy this okay so let's uh, wait for a few seconds for it to be uh, for it to be deployed so it will not give you the uh, the latest changes immediately the api gateway takes a few minutes uh, or no no few seconds to be updated right so in the back this endpoint which is nothing but the sync express workflow trigger is calling this uh, step function called sync express workflow and this sync express workflow is kind of uh, executing this Two tasks which is uh, one is one is fetching the user and the one is the recommend videos so the fetch user requires a, a, a user ID in the request so that's that's what we are sending that in the uh, in the in the postman we're sending the user ID and then it will give the user information to recommend videos and the output of this recommend videos will be given back to the API gateway and then API gateway will uh, make use of the uh, uh, the integration response feature and then it will filter out uh, the, the the part that we need okay so now let's call the api and here we go we got the response that we uh, actually require okay so that's all about the video and thanks for watching it and if you like the video please uh, hit the like button uh, like button and also if you're new to the channel just go and subscribe to the channel thank you and have a great day